Moving right along to financial statement question number four, preparing a statement of earnings, statement of changes in equity, and a statement of financial position. There is no way we can do this in just one video. So I'm going to produce three separate videos, one for the statement of earnings, one for the statement of changes in equity, and one for the statement of financial position. Let's look at the question. Blue Corporation has the following monthly information available at March 31st, 2018. You'll notice we have a list of accounts. The required is to prepare the statement of earnings in good form and explain the purpose of the statement of earnings. So what's the first thing we should do when we're asked to do any financial statement? And the answer is to categorize each of the accounts into their financial reporting elements. Assets, liabilities, equity, revenue, and expenses. Let's get started. Accounts payable. Any account that has the word payable in it is a liability. Accounts receivable. The right to collect cash from our customers. Asset. Accumulated depreciation. This is the use of any long-lived assets over time. It is a negative amount, but it is still an asset account, called a contra-asset account because it's negative. Bank loan, liability. Cash, asset. Contributed capital, March 31st. Equity. Dividends. Dividends reduce retained earnings and therefore reduce equity, but I don't think of them as an equity account, so I like to mark them as a D. Equipment, asset. Income tax expenses and expense. I've already used E, so I start using X. Inventory, asset. Issuance of shares in March. Well, this is not an account on my statement of financial position, and it's not an account on my income statement, so it must belong to the statement of changes in equity. I therefore don't mark it at all. Other assets, non-current, is an asset. Prepaid expenses are an asset. Retained earnings, March 1st. That's the retained earnings at the beginning of the period, not the end of the period. I know that retained earnings at the beginning of the period are used to calculate ending retained earnings. This number therefore goes on the statement of changes in equity. I'm not going to denote it as anything. Total expenses, of course, goes on the statement of earnings. Total revenues are revenues. And warranty provision is a liability. Now that we've denoted all of the accounts, we can prepare the statement of earnings in good form. For the statement of earnings, I'm going to need all of the revenues and all of the expenses. I don't have any details about the expenses, so this is going to be a summarized statement of earnings. As always, we start with the company name, then the name of the statement, then for the month ended March 31st, 2018. Because we don't have individual revenue accounts or individual expense accounts, I'm not going to do the headings of revenue and expense. This is a summarized statement of earnings. Total revenue. Deduct these two and we get earnings before income tax. 111900 Income tax expense. And finally, net earnings, also called net income or profit. Summarized statement of earnings. What is the purpose of the statement of earnings? Remember, also called the income statement or the profit and loss statement. It's to show how much profit or loss a business generated during the period. As noted in my previous video, the statement of earnings is even more informative if we have some comparative information from other previous periods. This would allow decision makers to see the trends in both revenues and expenses over time. The purpose of the statement of earnings is different depending on the user, also called the stakeholder or decision maker. An investor wants to see consistent profit over time because it speaks to the ability of the business to continue in the future. It's used to predict the ability of the company to distribute dividends. Finally, highly profitable businesses have higher share values on the open market, and that increases the wealth of the investors who hold their shares. A creditor, also called lender, is interested in a business generating enough profit to pay interest expenses and repay the loan at maturity. We'll continue with the statement of changes in equity in the next video.